Looking for a practical compact crossover with smooth ride quality, fantastically fuel efficient engines and an exceptionally comfortable cabin. Well, this is the Citroen C3 Aircross and in today's review, I'm gonna tell you why this could be your perfect next car. If you've been keeping up to date with Citroen's latest vehicles, you know the French brand absolutely loves making small crossover cars perfect for a growing family. First, we got the rather funky C4 Cactus, and that arrived in the UK back in 2014. It's a personal favorite of mine. And now we've got this C3 Aircross. It's essentially a much larger and more refined and upmarket version than the C3 Super Mini. It replaced the C3 Picasso MPV, but it did so without compromising on practicality. You'll find out a bit more about that as we work our way through this review. And that made it a really desirable transition for a lot of Citroen loyalists. This model shares the same PF1 platform as many vehicles under the PSA Group badge. This is a massive conglomerate that owns brands like Peugeot, Citroen of course, Vauxhall and many others as well. So if you've been behind the wheel of say a Peugeot 2008 or a Vauxhall Crossland X or perhaps you already drive one of those cars, you'll be really interested by what's on offer here. This is the 2021 Midlife Refresh model and it offers the same extensive range of customization options that you get with the C3 Super Mini. So you get these rather funky and bold body colors, the contrasting roof here, and an attractive interior design that actually changes as you work your way up through the different trim levels. So you get a great deal of customization with this car. This particular model adds a slightly revised exterior design, more storage space inside the cabin, and a new infotainment system, which I'll show you in just a moment. And this is all fantastic because this car faces some very tough competition in what is a very bloated segment. Class leading rivals include the sharp handling Ford Puma, the spacious Skoda Kamiq, the bold Hyundai Kona, and the stylish Nissan Juke, which we have reviewed quite recently. So if you'd like to find out a bit more about that car before we jump in to the C3 Aircross, then click that pop-out banner above or the link in the description box below. Customers are definitely not short of choice when it comes to this segment. So what does this C3 Aircross do that makes it stand out? Well, while it might not be the most exciting small SUV to drive, it more than makes up for this with great personalization options, brilliant practicality and class leading comfort. And I'm gonna tell you why I think that in this in-depth review. And we'll start by hopping into the front to check out the comfort and tech on offer. So here we are then inside the Citroen C3 Aircross and the first thing I certainly noticed when I hopped in are the seats. So each trim level offers its own distinctive personality because they have their own uh, colour and theme for the upholstery. So with the top spec Shine Plus trim that we've got, we have um, Brasilia, dark leather and grey flecked upholstery. They look really, really nice and nicely complement the exterior colour that we've chosen with our um, configuration here. Um, these are also advanced comfort seats, so you may recognize that term if you're familiar with Citroen's vehicles. These are uniquely shaped um, seats with padding and distinctive stitching. You get 15 millimeters of memory foam underneath that upholstery, and what it does is it just holds you in place that little bit more when going around twisty roads, and it makes them much more comfortable than you'll find in equivalent rivals. So yeah, from me, top marks for the seats. If you're in the market for a small SUV, chances are that you enjoy a high riding position for a commanding view of the road ahead, and that's fantastic because the Citroen C3 Aircross definitely delivers that. Even in its lower setting, it's still nicely high, and there's a great deal of adjustability to be had to find the perfect driving position. You can also adjust the steering wheel by pulling that back on the left-hand side, pull it towards you and away, up and down. It's really easy to find the most comfortable position for you. So I'm really impressed with the level of build quality on offer here. Definitely not what I was expecting from a car that costs this much. Loving these air vents, Art Deco style. They've got silver accents surrounding them. You'll also see that on the buttons just below the central display. And that itself is framed in a gloss black 
frame. That looks very, very nice indeed, quite premium. The steering wheel is wrapped in a lovely leather, and I love the different materials used for the dashboard. Overall, a lot of thought has been taken um, into the design of the interior here, and yeah, I think Citroen has pulled it off. There's also lots of cubby holes dotted around the cabin, so there's a couple of cup holders here just below the handbrake. You've got a nice storage compartment in the centre console, goes down fairly deep, you can probably fit your smartphone and a few snacks in there, although there's a better place for your smartphone just under the central display because there's a 12 volt socket and a USB port there as well and more than enough space for even one of the bigger phones like the Samsung Galaxy S20. Uh, we can open up the glove box and you get a reasonable amount of space to work with there, nothing too impressive but glove boxes are generally quite disappointing these days and the door bins on the side more than enough to fit a 500 ml bottle so yeah your storage needs are pretty much solved with this c3 aircross what's the infotainment tech like then so i'm just going to boot the car up to show you the screen so as standard this will be a seven inch touchscreen display and you get a dab radio with six speakers uh, bluetooth plus apple carplay and android auto they come as standard which is nice to see uh, if you upgrade to the mid-range sign specification, this will be a 9-inch display and you get all the stuff that I just mentioned plus a free year subscription to Citroen Connect Nav with uh, 3D navigation, offering real-time traffic information, weather information and uh, fuel stop location. So if you're somebody who commutes for quite a long time every single day, then this might be an essential option. So what's the screen like to use on the move then? Well, I love how sharp the display is. It's really easy to see all the different options, but unfortunately, that's where the positives end. It's rather laggy and unresponsive to use. You'll see as I navigate between the different options, there's a bit of input delay. And when you select something like radio, it can take up to two to three seconds to load correctly. And that is not great when you're on the move and you want to concentrate on getting from A to B. Um, it's also quite difficult to find exactly what you're looking for. So I head over to the home menu using one of the shortcut buttons here and there's no kind of dedicated settings area. It should be in vehicle, but it doesn't have all of the stuff that I'm after really. It's a bit confusing. Um, it could just be fine tuned a lot more. And the worst thing about it, in my opinion, is that it integrates all the climate controls. So you have to, I, I even misclick them by accident. Uh, you have to go to a dedicated menu for this, press quite hard to adjust the air intensity and temperature and it would just be much better if these were just physical buttons below the display. It's also worth mentioning the analog instrument dials just behind the steering wheel here. In case within those is a 3.5 inch color touchscreen that just shows your speed, your mileage, how much fuel you've got left, all that essential information. If you want something a little bit more fancy though, you can configure a head up display as an option. And what this does, it displays your speed, uh, cruise control settings, navigation, all directly in front of you. It's very much a nice to have feature, not something I would consider essential, but if you want to get the most out of your configuration and really maximize the potential of the C3 Aircross, then this is something that you should definitely consider. We've also configured this car with the optional panoramic sunroof, which lets lots of light into the cabin, but it does come with a few drawbacks and we're going to explore what those are when we hop into the back. So the back of the Citroen C3 Aircross is pretty comfortable. There's a generous amount of legroom, even for passengers that are over six foot tall. Though if you are that size, you might find your knees just touching the uh, back of the seat like that, though it's not too much of an issue because they're really soft and really squidgy. So you'll be more than comfortable. Um, I really like this padded compartment here, ideal for an iPad or a magazine, lots of storage. Um, in the back here as well and I just absolutely love this blind that you can pull up and attach like that and stop people from peering in and staring at you from outside <laughs> always a benefit on the whole then headroom is absolutely fine so I'm only five foot eight or nine and I'm barely touching the roof lining um, if you are over six foot though you might have difficulty especially if you've opted for the panoramic sunroof that's going to set you back around a thousand and thirty pounds like we have with this particular configuration and that's because it trims a couple of centimeters off of the headroom that doesn't sound like much but it makes a big difference and you might find yourself just touching the roof there if you're over six foot tall so it's something to consider it's a really hard to resist option though isn't it because it lets so much light into the cabin brings it alive and it's just perfect for that one day of summer that we have in the uk so if you don't have a middle passenger you can fold down the center compartment here by tugging on that and you get a couple of cup holders which is fantastic 
And I do personally recommend the Aircross for a family of four and not five, because the passenger who has to sit in the middle is gonna be pretty depressed, and I'll show you why. So you don't have a lot of legroom to play with. You'll be encroaching on the personal space of the other rear passengers. Short journeys, absolutely fine. You know, 10 to 15 minutes to a relative's house or party, something like that. But longer journeys, best avoided in the middle. A couple of other bits of note then. So it's nice that all the passengers get to share this center compartment here. Um, there's a 12 volt socket just down there for charging a laptop and there's a few Isofix fittings on either seat So that's always nice to see if you'd like to explore um, the interior a little bit more closely um, Our vehicle specialist can tell you more about the personalization options on offer so you can bring out your personality in your Citroen C3 Aircross Happy to answer any questions and address your concerns. So make sure to get in touch on 01903 538 835 or you can just click that pop out banner above to book a consultation at a time that works for you right let's hop out and we're going to explore the exterior design in a bit more detail so let's take a closer look at the car's exterior design so as standard you get eco led headlights with daytime running lights fantastic to see that you get these on all trims regardless of which one you opt for so we have a redesigned front look here and this is inspired by the C Experience concept car that first unveiled back in 2016 and it's now something you see on a lot of Citroen production cars these days and that started with the new C3. It's a rather bold and assertive look if you love the rather quirky stylings of the Duke I think you'll find a lot to love here as well. There's a rather strange bit of plastic running along the uh, front here and that nicely complements the Citroen badging and you've got a large air intake running along the bottom as well that ultimately just completes the look. It's rather striking and it stands out from other small SUVs on the market. Let's head round to check out the side profile. So you'll see that contrasting roof there. You can get that in three new colours with the midlife refresh. These include Pearl and Era Black, Polar White and Monotone, so it just being whatever body colour that you've chosen. There's also three new exterior body colours. These are Voltaic Blue, Khaki Grey and polar white and we've just opted for one of the grey colours and that added around £545 to our configuration and it really nicely brings out the exterior design flourishes. With the C3 Aircross then you get electrically adjustable door mirrors and these fold inwards when you lock the car and the indicators show up on the sides here as well, really handy when overtaking on the motorway. So alloy wheels then, these range from 16 to 17 inches in size. Because we've opted for the top spec Shine Plus trim, we have large 17 inch origami diamond cut alloy wheels. And these look absolutely gorgeous and nicely complement the rest of the car's design. Wheelbase then, that's the difference between the front and rear axles. It's grown by 60 millimeters over the regular C3 to 2,604 millimeters. And what that's done, it's just freed up more space inside the interior. So it now comfortably fits four adults for a long journey. As we make our way towards the rear then, you'll spot the body coloured door handles. Uh, you get tinted rear windows and the quarter glass will also be tinted if you opt for the Shine Plus trim. And with Shine Plus, you also get the white exterior colour pack and that adds this free glass graphic to the rear quarter glass and it looks very nice indeed. And also the fuel cap is here on the left hand side as well. And as we make our way to the back, you'll see the darkened LED light clusters just completing this really extravagant look. So guys, do let me know your thoughts on the C3 Aircross's exterior design. Is it ticking a lot of your boxes? If it is, then do make sure to get in touch with OSV's vehicle specialists on 01903 538 835 or click that pop-up banner above to book a consultation at a time that works for you. Okay, let's open up the boot then. So it's one of the most useful and generous boot capacities offered by a small SUV at the moment. So let's have a look at how much space we've got to play with. So you get 410 litres. That's enough room for six carry-on suitcases. And if you opt for the Shine Plus trim, you can then slide the rear seats forward and that gives you a whopping 520 litres to play with. Lots of space for all your bits and bobs. So let's take down the parcel shelf so you get a better idea of the luggage capacity on offer. If I can get it out, there we are. Put it to the side here. So yeah, pretty cavernous space to work with. 
Um, you can extend this further by folding down the rear seats and that will give you 1,289 litres to play with, though unfortunately you can't fold them down from the back here, you'll need to hop into the rear cabin space. Open the door and pull that lever there and they will just fold down like that and then you can slide objects through like uh, skis, camping equipment, you name it, you can slide it through into the cabin. Right, let's head back out and I'll show you a bit more about the boot. So the Citroen C3 Aircross offers a really flexible loading area. You have quite a low loading lip here that lets you lug in really heavy shopping bags with lots of ease. Um, with every trim level that isn't the entry level C series, you get a pull out boot floor. And when it's completely flat like this and you've got the rear seats folded down as well, there's no gap whatsoever, making it really easy to slide awkwardly shaped and sized items into the rear cabin space. You can also take it out completely like so to maximise the luggage capacity as much as possible and you can now see that you have a really deep and cavernous boot to work with and I'm really impressed with the practicality on offer here. Right, let's put everything back into the boot and take the Citroen C3 Aircross for a spin. Then we're behind the wheel of the Citroen C3 Aircross. This car shares the same platform as the regular C3, so the driving experience on offer is quite a similar affair, um, and this is for both good and bad reasons. So the suspension here is quite soft. It's a nice change of pace from the firmer suspension setups you get with cars like the Ford Puma, which are obviously much sportier. However, the downside of this is you do feel pretty much every imperfection in the road. It ricochets throughout the cabin. It's also a problem that plagues the uh, regular C3. However, thanks to this car's extra ride height, uh, the sound isn't as bad, but you kind of still feel the impact, unfortunately. I'm pretty impressed with how stable this vehicle is, considering its size. It's got a good resistance to body roll, so you won't find yourself leaning too much when you're manoeuvring around tight corners and bends. And I'd say it's on par with something like the Ford Puma, which is impressive to say for a vehicle that is definitely not as sporty. Driving at speeds up to 30 miles per hour, it's very smooth and it's just such a comfortable car to drive around town. But as you approach 60 miles per hour and beyond, you know, doing a bit of motorway driving, you're on the dual carriageway, it does start to pick up a bit of wind and road noise. Um, the engine is also quite loud and the clutch and accelerator pedals do start to buzz a little bit. It can be a bit annoying. So yeah, this is a great car to drive around town, you know, go to the shops, uh, things like that. But just bear in mind, motorway driving, you're going to get some sounds sort of echoing around the cabin which could disrupt your driving experience. The Citroen C3 Aircross has very light steering. This is very much to my taste. However, if you're used to a vehicle with quite hard and firm steering, it may take some time to adjust. Right, it's getting a bit dark now, so we're going to head back to the office where I'll tell you a little bit more about the trim levels and the engines on offer. Okay guys, let's talk about the engines and trim levels, but before we do, it is worth noting that the C3 Aircross isn't available in all-wheel drive configuration, unfortunately, though you do get the grip control system, and this improves traction on sand, snow, and rough terrain. So you can off-road, it is possible to off-road in the C3 Aircross, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. So the entry-level powertrain is the PureTech 110 six-speed manual unit, which is what we have configured with our particular model. This consists of a 1.2-litre three-cylinder engine that may be familiar to a lot of you if you've previously driven a Citroen or Peugeot model. Uh, this outputs 109 brake horsepower and 205 newton meters of torque, and it achieves a 0 to 62 miles per hour time of 10.1 seconds. Not bad, quite respectable, but do take that into account when building up speed on a dual carriageway or on the motorway. Six-speed manual comes as standard, but you can also configure
configure the C3 Aircross with an automatic gearbox if you'd like. This is the same Eisen unit you'll find in the latest Mini models and it's great. It works through the gears really smoothly. So if you like how it's implemented in those Minis, then you'll really like what the C3 Aircross offers here. The PureTech 110 is one of the most fuel efficient small SUVs on the market. It achieves 47 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and outputs CO2 emissions for around 134 grams per kilometer. And that places it in a rather reasonable benefit in kind tax bracket for company car buyers. Next up the ladder, we have the PureTech 130 variant, and this is exclusively available with the six speed auto transmission. There's no manual option available. Uh, this unit outputs 129 brake horsepower and 230 newton meters of torque for a slightly improved 0 to 62 miles per hour time of 9.2 seconds. While it's nice to have this extra performance, do expect to spend a little bit more on fuel and company car tax when opting for this powertrain. It's slightly less fuel efficient than the previous unit, achieving around 45.6 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and it outputs slightly more CO2 as well. And this ranges from 140 to 158 grams per kilometer, depending on your exact specification. After the most frugal engine option, then you need to opt for the blue HDI 110 diesel unit. Um, it's great that Citroen still have this available as a lot of manufacturers unfortunately seem to be phasing out their diesel engines. Um, this unit achieves 99 brake horsepower and 250 newton meters of torque for a 0 to 62 time of 10.8 seconds. So it's notably quicker than something like a diesel Renault Capture, which achieves the same time in 14.4 seconds. The miles per gallon on offer here is fantastic. It achieves up to 58.8 on the combined cycle. So if you're somebody who has a rather long commute to work every day and you're, you really wanna reduce the amount of fuel stops you're making, then this could be a really fantastic option. Um, it outputs up to 125 grams per kilometer of CO2, again, putting it in rather a reasonable benefit in kind tax bracket. Uh, there's no auto gearbox option available with this diesel unit. You just get that six speed manual. And it is also worth noting that the blue HDI 110 is more expensive than the PureTech 110, despite being less capable in the performance department. So you will have to weigh up whether the frugality on offer here is worth that extra premium. Okay, trim levels time. Let's start with the entry level variant, the C series trim. Uh, prices for this start from £17,320, and I think that's quite reasonable for a small SUV. Uh, the equipment on offer here is pretty good for a standard spec. Uh, you get eco LED headlights with daytime running lights, a 16 inch X cross or cross cross diamond cut alloy wheels, which I think look pretty nice to be fair, um, rear parking sensors, cruise control, uh, the lane departure warning safety system and Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So yeah, pretty good spec on offer for this entry level trim. Next up the ladder, we have Shine. Uh, this trim level starts from £19,820 and for the £2,500 premium, you get extra safety features like the active safety brake with forward collision warning and the Citroen Connect box emergency and assistance system, whereby you can use the SOS button near the rear view mirror to alert the emergency services in the event of an accident. Other high Highlights of the Shine trim include the larger 9-inch touchscreen with the Citroen Connect Nav system, uh, Mika Grey upholstery and chrome inserts around the dashboard, steering wheel and centre console, a flexible pull-out floor to adjust the height of the boot, and you can also upgrade to larger 17-inch alloys with this trim as well. The top spec trim level is Shine Plus, and this starts from £21,500. For this price, you get larger 17-inch origami diamond cut alloy wheels, and you can upgrade these to full black wheels that look absolutely gorgeous. Uh, you get the Brasilia dark leather and grey flecked upholstery with the advanced comfort seats, um, an adjustable central armrest on the driver's side, keyless entry and start, and front parking sensors with the reversing camera. So if you really want to make the most out of your C3 Aircross, then this is the trim that you need to go for. If you have any questions about the trim levels and the engines that need answers, then one of our vehicle specialists will be more than happy to help. So do make sure to get in touch on 01903 538 835, or you can click the pop-up banner above to book a date or time for a chat. Okay, let's head back to our car park to wrap up this review. 
So, should you buy, lease or finance a Citroen C3 Aircross? Well, if you're the kind of driver who prioritises comfort over performance, then this is one of the best small SUVs that you can get your hands on at the moment. I'm absolutely loving the design, both in and out. It's very attractive, very appealing. The cabin is incredibly comfortable for both the driver and the passengers, and you get a nice high riding position, providing a really commanding view of the road ahead. I'm also really impressed with the level of practicality on offer. There's loads of storage cubby holes around the cabin. You get those sliding rear seats, which is fantastic. And I definitely recommend you configure those with this car because they just take it to that next level. And you get a really generously sized boot. That's going to be more than enough room for the weekly grocery shop and the occasional camping trip. It's also pretty competitively priced, so it's more affordable than the Ford Puma and the Skoda Kamiq. It's not without its downsides though. That infotainment system is a little bit laggy and fiddly to use, especially while on the move. And I wish the climate controls weren't integrated into the display and were just instead buttons below it. That'd be much easier to use while you're traveling from A to B. Also, if you are looking for a car with a little bit of oomph, this isn't it. It's a bit slow and sluggish off the block. It's very much designed to get you from A to B in comfort and quite a bit of style as well. So if you are looking for a car that delivers exciting performance, you're not going to get it with the Aircross, but you are going to get a ton of other benefits as well. It's just for a completely different customer, really. So if you're interested in the Citroen C3 Aircross, one of our vehicle specialists will be happy to provide you with any information you need and help you get behind the wheel of your perfect specification. So get in touch today on 01903 538 835 or click that pop out banner above to book a free consultation or the link in the description there's so many options to get in touch with our team of experts if you enjoyed this in-depth look at the c3 aircross do make sure to give it a thumbs up that really helps us out and we really do appreciate it also subscribe that way you won't miss out on the latest motoring content and to definitely not miss out make sure to ring that notification bell because you'll get notified when a new video goes live but that's it for today guys hope you enjoyed this video Take care and safe driving.